The women are supremely confident in their ability. And let's be honest here. They should go on and walk this group. They should go on and qualify for the World Cup. And they should go on and qualify for the Olympics. Hello, everyone. Welcome on into OneSoccer.ca. Annie Petrillo, Gareth Wheeler, Oliver Platt. Yes, I am in my gym. There is no point in explaining today's situation, but this is the only room in the house where hopefully I can get some peace and quiet. Let's you start dive. doing bicep curls during the show today, <laughs> jumping I'm just, jacks. <laughs> I'm going to start doing the rower. If I don't agree with any of your answers, that's how I'll get my frustration out. Uh, but let's Keep our dive answers in. short. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's dive into the women. Uh, the CONCACAF W Championship draw was just a couple uh, days ago. We know the group that Canada is going to be in. So this is a really big tournament. If you're just hearing about it for the first time, this is the qualifier for 2023 World Cup as well as 2024 Olympics and Gold Cup. And how it works is the top four teams from this tournament, so there are two groups, uh, the top two in each group will automatically qualify for the World Cup next summer. And that will be split between Australia and New Zealand. The winner of the tournament, this is where it gets pretty interesting, gentlemen. The winner of the tournament automatically qualifies for Paris 2024 and the Gold Cup. The second and third place teams still have a chance to qualify for the Olympics, but they have to go into a playoff. So the tournament we're talking about is going to take place between July 4th and 18th this summer. Canada is in a group with Costa Rica, Panama, Trinidad, and Tobago. Ollie, your thoughts on this group and if Canada should finish tops? Yeah, of course they should, and, and they should win all three games. Like, the, the whole draw basically revolved around Mexico, right? Like, are you going to get Mexico in the group stage and have to beat them then, or are you going to get them in the semifinal and have to beat them then? Um, so I, I think from Canada's perspective, like, I'm not saying that these are and, and necessarily going to all be easy games. I think some of them should be very straightforward, but it should be nine points out of nine in the group. And then you go on to the semifinal where you'll likely face Mexico unless they, they can cause an upset in their group with the United States. And you know, that's what it's going to be about for Canada in this tournament is firstly getting to that final and having a chance to probably play the U.S. and, and qualify automatically. And then if they're, they're unable to do that, it will be about that playoff game you just mentioned and, and having to beat Mexico probably twice. Um, mm. So uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the, the draw, again, it was just a case of do they beat Mexico in the group stage and get the easier semifinal or do they get the easier group and then have to beat Mexico in the semifinal? And it's come out as the latter. This one is, I mean, it is pretty interesting, right? Because this tournament, by the way, is in Mexico. It's in Monterey, Mexico. So they got the, the home field advantage and they yeah. do have the fans behind them in this one. And, and as I mentioned, Gareth, this is a new format when it comes to qualifying for the Olympics. The Gold Cup is a new tournament as well, uh, which will be really exciting for more games, more competitive matches for women's soccer. But in the past, if, if we do look at the past in the Olympic qualifier, Canada has made the final a uh, majority of the times and they've made the final against the United States. And majority of the time, you know, they have lost to the United States. But it's never really mattered at that point because the top two teams uh, in that previous Olympic qualifier, they knew they were going to the Olympics anyway. So how much pressure is on Canada now knowing that it's the winner of this tournament who gets that spot at the Olympics, um, the, the loser, so to say, second place, third place, they have to go into a playoff. And they're the defending Olympic champs. It shouldn't be felt um, or, or portrayed as pressure because you are now the Olympic champions. The bar has been raised. And I think the expectations are there both externally as well as internally. It has to. I, I, I mean, the women are supremely confident in their ability. And let's be honest here. They should go on and walk this group. They should go on and qualify for the World Cup. And they should go on and qualify for the Olympics. Like, that's where we're at in, in, in terms of where this team is. When you're an Olympic champion, the expectation follows you. And look, I, I think it went a little bit under the, uh, you know, was kind of brushed under the carpet a little bit. A 2-2 draw against Nigeria at home is not good enough. I know it's a friendly. That's a celebration tour. I understand that there was lots of different priorities and distractions. But look, like, if you're going to be one of the top footballing nations in the world and start turning over results, not just gold medal podiums, what was the motto? Change the color of the medal? Like the ambitions to be on the podium or be into the, in, in the mix in, in winning championships anyways. Th th this should be a mere formality walking through this tournament. And yes, they'll be tested in times. And yes, there'll be some self-discovery. And yes, you want to see players step up and rise to the occasion. This is a big tournament for them. Absolutely. 
but the expectation has to be there amongst this group. And if they don't qualify Andy, I think it goes down uh, just a massive letdown. Just a, It would be a massive disappointment if this team doesn't go on and qualify for both the World Cup and the Olympics. Massive disappointment, not just because they're the Olympic champions, but they've meddled at the last three Olympics with their exactly. two bronze as well. So, and, and, and this region, like, you know, this region is still very much developing. Like, teams like Mexico, you mentioned, Ali, they're improving. They're getting better. Like, this isn't Europe where, like, a France doesn't qualify for the Olympics, no. which just seems, like, ridiculous. And some of the top nations don't. Like, Canada should walk this. And I understand the, the new threat of Mexico, but come on. Like, Canada's closer to being the United States than they are Mexico right now. That's where we're at. I, I just, th this whole mindset of playing down to your competition, I, I, I just don't see that that's where the vision should be here. It's about making sure that you're on par. You're able to go toe to toe on a regular basis with the US women's national team. Mexico, for me, they should be in the rear view mirror. You're, you're, you're conscious, like, you know that they're there, you're mindful of them, but really your focus is on the US women's national you know, team. On paper, how close is Canada starting 11 to the USA's best 11? Well, starting 11, may, maybe not a million miles away. The, the depth is a different question. And you know that comes down to a lot of the NWSL and, and the massive pool of players that the US has as a result of that league. But maybe starting 11, you can get closer. Um, I, I think Ashley Lawrence and Kadisha Buchanan walk into the US team. And defensively, that's where you can look at Canada and say they might have a unit as good as the Americans, if not better. Um, obviously, in midfield and attack, it's, it's more difficult You know, when, when you're talking about you know, the U.S. can leave a player like Rose Lavelle on the bench, right? Because they've got Lindsey Horan and Julia Ertz and Sam Mewis and, and all of these these quality players. And the forwards, kind of a similar deal. So, look, there, there's players in the Canadian team, Fleming, still Christine Sinclair, Janine Becky, that I think are true international caliber players that, that can compare, you know, for, for any national team. But there's nowhere near as many of them um, as the U.S. have and, and maybe not the absolute top best players in the world and, and outside of Fleming in terms of forwards and midfielders. So they're, they're still a little bit off them, but I think it's not really about comparing, you know, directly who's got the better 11. It's about finding out for Canada, where are we better and how can we really exploit that and expose that, right? And, and put the emphasis on that. That's something that I think, you know, John Herdman did a great job with, with the men, was understanding that, like, we're not going to be as good as Mexico in some aspects of the game in like the two years that I have to work with the players and build up to these qualifiers. But what are the areas where we can be as good as them or even better than them? And let's really focus on those. And, and I think that's what the women, women have got to do as well. The, the other interesting element, uh, the U.S. are kind of turning over their team a little bit. Some of the older players are making way for some opportunity for younger players. So what mm. is that U.S. starting 11 or preferred 11 going to look like because as Ollie mentioned like the depth is just superior um in the women's game based upon population cultivation a, a, a lot of different things here but yeah you're absolutely right Canada just needs to find a way to be the best version of themselves like when they beat the U.S. in the Olympics they rode their luck at times but I think that it was a clean game really like the, Canada was in control remember that game no fans no outside distractions during an Olympic bubble right during a very random time in our lives here during COVID. It's going to be a completely different situation. Fans in the stands, there'll be American fans down there in Mexico as well. So um, let, let's see. I, I, I can't wait for this test and I want to see it, you know, just a one-off for with an Olympic berth on the line. Here we go. Like th these are yeah. the games that you live for in Canada should be very much right in the mix. Yeah, and it, if there's one thing this Canadian team has shown us, right, is is resiliency yeah. and very excited to see what they can do here. And one thing that stands out as we put a bow on this chat, Bev Priestman said entering the Olympics, she wanted to be the best coach when it came to decisions behind substitution. So to your point, she may also understand that sometimes toe-to-toe -to -toe in certain positions, um, Canada may not be the strongest team, but if she can make a substitution to put the right player in, she can get that formation right. Very much what we saw with John Herdman, by the way, she coached under Herdman as well. Then you can expect a very dynamic Canadian side. So very excited for that. That tournament goes July 4th to 18th uh, in Monterey, Mexico.